I'd like to jump a little bit to the section neck, top line, and body. Yeah. Can we stand the dog and take Very a look important. at the top line? Very important. Look, in such dogs, Molotian dogs. Molotian top. You can't have, you can never have a back or a top line. As in a setter, for example, or in a, in a, in a, in a Belgian Shepherd. You see, because the dog is co generally concave, this concavity you can see in the nose and a little bit in the in the in the uh, top line. You see here, a little bit coming down here, but it should never be saddled. Well, some some pictures are, of course, saddled, but should not be. And uh, I saw today some very bad uh, backs. Sinking here, which is very, very uh, sagging top line. In the rear, this is good. This is great. This is what you can obtain. Again, you can never have a, a and it's a, it's impossible to have a, a, a perfectly straight line as in the Belgian setup. In the, in the rear of the body, the uh, it should be a little bit higher in the back, or how is no, the... No, no, no. When it is higher in the back, it's because the, the rear angulation is too straight. If the rear angulation is too straight, the, you have the coot the is higher than normal, and then you have a sinking top line. It should not sink here. A little bit lower, it's normal. Okay. <coughs> Can we see the angulation on this dog? Yes, angulation. Can you see it on the camera? A very uh, important, I must say, important difference with the bull mastiff. The, the bull mastiff uh, angulations are a, a bit straighter. The, the, it means the, the angles are more obtuse, are more open than in the dog the body, normally. See? Uh, Yes. Yeah, it's normal. It's a, it's a, it's a normal uh, uh, angulation. This angle here is, uh, is well marked, as you can see. Uh, uh, unhappily, unhappily, many Dr. Bodo, not many, but a good, <laughs> good number of Dr. Bodo have a, a bad high quarters. You should be very strict with cow hooks and all that sort of thing. And also straight angulation. You see on one side straight angulation, the other side is cow hook. The way when you see from behind, so the cow hook is very bad. Yes, yes, look, look at the back. Yeah, sure, sure. You see this back? This is very, very good, you know? With a good angulation here, you can see the hawks and, 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 and uh, the typical tail, very, very broad here, not kinked, never kinked, you know? It's very good, typical. Also the color is typical, you see, because you see, it's uh, what we call mahogany, but uh, uh, it's, only, it's only a way of, 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 of speaking, because scientifically it's formed with overlaid with brown, you see, uh, 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 tips, only the tips should be. And here you see it becomes paler here, lighter here. It's quite normal. On the shoulders too, the, the hair is lighter, yellower. This is typically the hot, what we call mahogany. That's a very good one. Can you also point out the angle of the shoulders? Yes. Well, you know, uh, 90 degrees is probably false. <laughs> it's simply, I called it propaganda. The problem is, you know, that the angle between the scapula, that is the shoulder blade, and the humerus, that is the arm, is normally in dogs 110, 120 degrees. But dog de bordo, in dog de bordo, it's a bit more acute because the legs, as you can see, the, when you see from the side, the front legs are a little bit backwards. You see, a, a bit under the body, in front. Okay. That's why we say 90. Maybe it's 100. 100.
Okay, and uh, would you make any comparisons in the gait of the Dog de Bordeaux compared to a Bull Mastiff? Yes, yeah, so a Bull Mastiff. When you say Bull Mastiff in static, the four quarters are much are straight. You see, for people who don't know the dog, they think they are better because they are upright. A Dog de Bordeaux is never upright because the chest is so broad that the dog has to compensate and so the the forearms uh, 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 the forearms here will, are a little bit uh, convergent a little bit and then you have a compensation here you see uh, a dog the border most dog the border and it is quite normal have the the four feet a little bit out not uh, east or west of course but a little bit out is absolutely normal it is in their nature that is one great difference second great difference this allows the dog the border to have a very long reach in front you see when they walk they are like a swimmer uh, crawling swimmer. you see he Reaches, uh, we say long reach because he, he I don't know what, what, what you can say, it's a, it's a sort of a, a pendulum, you know, it goes very far ahead. We say, we say that he, 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 he takes as much ground as he can. It, and this is why the, the head goes lower, he lowers his head to enable him to uh, cast his uh, his his forearm far there in front. Typical of the dog the border. And then you have the head is lowered and this part of the back too in, in order to walk like this. It's a beautiful gait. Long reaching gait. Let us say long reaching strike. That's the proper term. Long reaching strike in front. Normally of course you cannot do that without a thrust a good thrust from behind. See? But the bullmaster can't do that because he is he is too perfectly upright uh, in static. This is my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. And one final question: What would you say uh, in making a judgment when you're judging the Bordeaux? What do you penalize most greatly for? If you uh, selecting between a dog that uh, can not I move can't move. The dog to go, though, as any dog, should be typical. So type in air. The type in air is not all. A dog should be able to walk. It should be sound. So we avoid. Formerly we had dogs without enough to work uh, with. Uh, uh, insufficient time, no wrinkles, no deep stop, etc. Now we have the proper hands, but sometimes too much. We call it hyper time. That is too much. Uh, and it, it means uh, noses that are sh too short, folds, uh, uh, ugly rolls, uh, uh, eyelids co uh, 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 coming down. So you can see the third eyelid, the third eyelid is what we call, uh, the English call hall. Hall should not be visible, it means the third eyelid should not be visible and also uh, 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 the, the inside of the, eye, of, of the normal eyelid should not be visible either. But so, type and soundness, it is good gait and uh, well, you, you, you just uh, read the standard and you try to apply it. I, I, I remind you of one truth that is the standard and the description of the ideal dog. You try to, to go as near as possible uh, the uh, uh, ideal dog. Well, thank you very much for your time. And I, I believe that uh, we are at the... Uh, in France today in 2006 at the SADB, the French Club's uh, National Specialty Show. And uh, the dog that we're using as an example uh, was the, the, the placed highly in this show. I believe uh, he was reserved for a male.
very good specimen of the breed. Well, generally in France, the Americans are doing very well because they bring us good, uh, good dogs, no doubt about that. Now, when you can see in the show, uh, 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 so we had today 236, I think, uh, dog to Bodo, which is, uh, I think, uh, uh, the best lesson we can have. Because, you see, we, today we saw, of course, not all are, 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 are good or very good, but, uh, I mean, we saw many, many very, very good specimens. So this should be an example. Well, once again, thank you, Professor, and thank you for the uh, use of your dog. Yeah, but I know uh, uh, that it will be the, the work of the end, you know, I know that the Americans like to be first in everything. I don't doubt you become first in the dog de bodo, but in dog de bodo, not an American dog de bodo. A dog de bodo uh, that everybody admires everywhere. I don't doubt you can do that.